good morning dear friends as you know we had already discussed about the competencies needed for sustainable development and the first competency we discussed about the anticipatory competency the anticipatory competency is directly linked with forecasting the future and there are different methods of forecasting futures there are four major methods where we can talk about involving our experience and insight for projecting our futures visions and future scenario when we talk about our projections that involves the creative exercise by making use of brainstorming method the second method is simulation and role play the third method is future wheel and fourth one is scenario writing there are many methods through which our forecasting competencies anticipatory competencies can be nurtured among students teachers and teacher educators now i'll talk first about brainstorming brainstorming means to work that our brain storms we have many feelings ideas expectations thoughts which are loaded in unconscious mind and they are put in our subconscious state of mind and we reveal it through free expressions and conscious mind doesn't make any evaluation rather it opens up the ideas to come out so the major feature of brainstorming is a large number of ideas are generated about our futures and probable solutions for futuristic problems the second feature is encouraging deferred judgment about solution of specific problems without making any evaluation of ideas which are generated through brainstorming session the conscious operation is deal with dealing with evaluation of ideas rather with the more emphasis on bringing out our inner ideas and thoughts through free will exercise without making any kind of assessment or evaluation let the ideas come out freely openly and creatively the next point here is there are different phases of conducting brainstorming session the first phase is the warm up session or orientation session the second session is idea generation session and the third stage is session for evaluating and progressing ideas which is based on ideas generated through brainstorming activity so when i say about warm up session it means a group of people the students teachers teacher educators and experts they become free and it is ice breaking exercise and they are introduced about their role and the games of the brainstorming session the team leader who conducts the brainstorming session he engages the participants for free expression of ideas and third is 
after the ideas have been generated in maximum number, then it will be put into assessment and evaluation for organizing these ideas. Now let us see this warm-up session and idea generation session. The warm-up session makes us at ease to search and explore the ideas which are already existing inside us. So we go for different kinds of verbal and non-verbal puzzles and exercises and we warm up our groups in informal and free exercise of our feelings and ideas. Try to relax and let the idea to come. It comes at the second phase where the idea generation session takes place. The participants are encouraged and they are said that don't evaluate ideas which come from your own inner feelings and mind. Listen and improve on other people's ideas. And the more the ideas are produced, the more good ideas will be presented. The idea generation session, it says that we will have to give many opportunities and alternative ideas and thoughts to come out from amongst our participants. As many ideas come out, that is better for plotting the scenario of the future. Once the ideas are generated, as many ideas are generated, which are being recorded by our system, maybe manually in writing it or in the blackboard or recording it by video recorders and taking it to uh, the information systems. Third area is the evaluation session. When I say evaluation session, so once the ideas have been generated, they are organized and classified on different heads and subheads in the context of our future's projections. This phase includes evaluation of ideas by participants after analysis and classification of these ideas. On this basis, certain trends may emerge through evaluation exercise, which we may use it for writing the scenario of future. There are different sub-procedures of brainstorming session. These sub-procedures are included in brainstorming activities, in warm-up sessions and orientation sessions, in idea generation sessions, and sessions for evaluating and progressing the ideas. One of the sub-procedure involved here is the trigger sessions. That generally, the trigger session exercise is called the individual brainstorming exercise. It means we request that as many ideas come to your mind on this, you write it off or you record it off or you may verbally express it and record it in your own mobile phone and then you generate ideas and you collate it and classify it. Once these ideas are generated individually at their own place of time, not having any exposure to others and other groups, then in the second phase we collate these ideas and put before the group. So different ideas collected through different cards which may be recorded by different students, then it is presented for generation of different ideas in the group. In brainstorming exercise, what we call it as creative exercise, we encourage the wildest ideas to come up. Here, when I say wildest ideas, as many ideas, whether negative or positive, or 
whether it suits to our own moral conducts or not, that doesn't matter. Any ideas, any thoughts that come, it must be presented. So unconventional ideas, through introduction of unusual starting points, they come out. And it encourages to develop wishful ideas at the cost of exploring speculative ideas. The speculative ideas are based on different norms and procedures, so we go beyond that and wishful ideas and our feelings, our hopes, expectations, whatever it may be, it must come out of our own mind. Here, in this context, we think impossible ideas, impossible ideas, the desirable one for generation of a number of unconventional ideas. We can go for practical values of these ideas for solution of different problems. So usually in case of a classroom, we go for one hour time, one and a half hours time for generating different ideas in classroom situations or in workshops where small groups are also organized to formulate different ideas on different components of the future scenario. Now we'll talk about simulation and role playing. When I say simulation and role playing, that means we are not in a real condition, but approximately we are being closer to the reality. The reality cannot be reproduced because it is in future. So what we do, we build the futures in simulated forms, as many alternatives as possible. So it is a device of future scanning. And it provides judgment on trustworthiness of alternative courses of action by exploring alternative means and alternative scenarios related to alternative policies. One can assess the anticipated impact and probabilities of occurrences of individual events upon each other. So, the modeling and simulation exercises are encouraged with the help of artificial intelligence and participation of experienced persons, their insightful expressions. Such exercise is used in policy analysis and strategic planning in the context of anticipated future, which we do not have it in our hand. We go for future games in this process. Future games can be organized in four phases. The first phase is two planning groups of five, five to six adult participants, like teachers and teacher educators, and each group is allocated with one point according to their own expectations and judgment and desirability. And they develop around 2025 20, potential futuristic developments through their exercises and activities in the context of education. Second phase is that the groups predict social consequences of these developments. So, when first we are going to project different ideas, the second phase is we analyze what will be the impacts and consequences of these developments. So, when we say universalization of elementary education, so if every person is literate, every person is functionally literate, every human being is linked with lifelong learning practices, so what will be its special uh, social impact? And then they assign some percentage or some kinds of expectations uh, in probabilistic form for each development. So what kind of impact it will have on each development? The third is when we go for collecting the reactions or judgments of students, like undergraduate students or postgraduate students or teacher education experts, then they go for 
futures oriented values what are or what will be the futuristic oriented values on the basis of the extrapolated futures by these groups one study we conducted where the main objective was to study that what are the reactions of college students particularly in the field of education to know about futures oriented value systems and the fourth phase is that once we get the reaction of the participants or the students then we go for judging the desirability of future development so what are desirable to what extent it is desirable and what we should do that will be linked with different scenario writings now we go for scenario writing so when we go for scenario writing in scenario writing we are going for involvement of people in different kinds of scenario there are six kinds of scenario that is projecting and depicting the future state of things to happen the first kind of scenario is the state scenario second is the path scenario third is extrapolatory scenario the fourth is anticipatory scenario the fifth is descriptive scenario and sixth is normative scenario so when i talk about state scenario it says that 2050 what will be the status of formal non formal and information communication technology supported informal learning opportunities for people of our country so we project about what will happen we describe the path scenario path scenario says that if we want to achieve the goal of lifelong learning for all so how we will move from 2023 to 2025 to achieve the goal of lifelong learning for all the citizens of the country through formal non formal and informal opportunities of learning third is exploratory scenario exploratory scenario is just a kind of projection based on the past experiences the way we have moved so far on the basis of our efforts in 21st century learning societies expectations on the basis of past 23 years experience we are going to project if we proceed in this direction so where shall we reach so it is based on the past training fourth one is anticipatory scenario anticipatory scenario says that what are the value systems what should we prefer towards 2050 then it will act as a guiding force for making our efforts from now onwards to achieve the goals which we have set through scenario writing the fifth one is descriptive scenario descriptive scenario is very very close to the idea of state scenario but it describes both the state of future and the path which we will adopt to reach the future the sixth one is normative scenario that says about what should be preferred how we will achieve our preferred future what are valuable for us the decision making will depend on resolving different value conflicts regarding our futures so our futures vision will guide us to set the 
teachers values and teachers orientation of our social and individual life next one is the approaches of writing scenarios there are different stages the first stage is we first identify different components of education system suppose we go for open learning and distance education system or online learning system so we will have to identify different components of the system on which we are going to write the scenario the second stage is specific questions are linked with each component so on each component we will have to write what will happen how it will happen what will be its impact what is to be preferred so these are the questions which are written on the third stage is specific questions are to be asked about the likely chronology of events what will be the first phase of operation what will be the second phase of operation how one phase will be linked with another phase of operation the fourth stage is what types of external changes that will take place that is first so far we are talking about internal components of education system now we are talking about external system so what kind of changes will take place in external system and what kind of impacts the external system will have on education system like technology advancements artificial intelligence economic conditions uh, economic uh, and political philosophy influencing our global life systems environments so different criteria different parameters of our social system will have to be analyzed and the questions will be raised that what will happen and the fifth one is the based on the answers related to internal components of education system and external factors influencing education system we go for writing a scenario and we identify it in the form of a checklist so it is a kind of step by step an approach there is a very interesting uh, exercise which we have already brought it to your notice in our item and one very interesting is the self harva method the where two groups of people are engaged in writing the scenario so the first group we explore the present positions of education in the country second position is that based on the observation of present status we develop a trend scenario towards 2050 for instance the online learning opportunities which are provided the past experience of five years about online learning so if on the basis of these experiences we have to project what will happen towards 2050 this happens now on the basis of this exercise we say that what should be preferred about the future so it is the second group will talk about the preferred scenario of the future the next step will be to develop the action plan that how we will move so on the basis of first group's exercise the second group is preparing the action plan then the all the ideas generated through different groups activities they are presented for full discussion and on the basis of discussions the scenarios are written about future now i will talk to you about another exercise very interesting exercise that is known as future wheel so future wheel is an important method of generation of likely consequences of the trend so the first trend second trend third trend there are different trends related to education like our liking for making use of online learning is being stronger day by day our interest for participation in group based activities in classroom situation 
is being encouraged by our teachers in our face-to-face -face mode instruction system. Different kinds of activity-based, project-based learning taking place as a part of curricular experiences. Assessment is being given more value than examination. Assessment becomes a part of continuous learning process. So these are the trends. So if we go for identifying these trends, now we are saying that if these trends are there, what will be its consequences? So in this regard, if you go for conducting one exercise, so we go for making use of a chart called a Peter Hill chart. We identify a problem. For instance, what will be the future of classroom towards 2050 in Indian schools? Second one is that we identify different trends related to this. For example, I said that different trends like our liking for making use of online facilities is increasing. Second is group-based learning activities are taking place in classroom system. The third is, is that assessment on continuous basis becomes a continuous and integrated part of our learning process. So these three trends are sort of there. Then we provide a future wheel chart. And on future wheel chart, we project what will be the impact of these trends. And Fourth is that we write the consequences of each trend in different phases. And fifth one is we go for analyze the future wheel and write the future scenario. So dear friends, when we go for this future wheel chart, for instance, the trend we go for projecting the futures of classrooms in 2050, so a major one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trains are identified. And each train will have two major impacts. So six trains will have 12 impacts. And each impact will have further impacts. So like this, if you go for analyzing these impacts, so one by one, we go for projecting and sometimes we come out with generation of innovative ideas as presented in this future wheel chart. So it is a kind of brainstorming in very organized form when we go for future wheel chart. So for example, we have projected about deforestation, a social picture. First trend is soil erosion. Second trend is less rainfall. Third trend is no forest resources. Soil erosion will have its impact on least agricultural land. Least agricultural land will have impact on urbanization and least agro product. Least agro product will have its impact on joblessness among youth and economic dependency of our country on developed countries. Least agricultural land will lead to urbanization, and urbanization will lead to unhealthy conditions of life and overpopulation in urban areas, and it will encourage migration from rural areas to urban cities. Soil erosion will lead to least soil fertility. So, it will have its impact on limited variety of crops, depending mainly on technology inputs, and the life and food habits of people will be affected. And it will not be in a position to solve the problems of hunger. This soil fertility will lead to chemical use, and the fertility of lands will also lead to more harmful agro-industry system. And it will have its impact on biodiversity and our ecosystem will be imbalanced. 
So like this, if you see in this future field chart, many ideas have been emerging through the exercise of future field by the participants in small groups as well as individuals. So dear friends, when we go for these kinds of futures anticipatory competency-based analysis, we make use of our experiences and we develop our competency of anticipatory sustainability and projecting our preferred futures by writing scenarios of the futures and making proper plans and policies to achieve our future goals. Thank you very much.